going to uh, call this meeting to order. It looks like about 6.05 or something around there. Um, so a big welcome. Obviously, it's the uh, beginning of a new year, new beginnings, which is always a special time and exciting. Um, I think maybe a special welcome and thank you to Tina and Kim uh, for taking on a very large task at uh, somewhat short notice. Um, we're excited. We're happy to be here. Really Good. Well. That's great. Yeah. We're very happy too. And I'd say a special thank you to the central office for having the wisdom for uh, to put together such a good team mm -hmm. uh, at <coughs> short notice. She's part of the central team office. Team Louise. <laughs> She's been I'm stepping good. up quite a bit. Uh, <laughs> thank you. I think also another special thank you is probably due to faculty and staff for being yes. supportive uh, of such a move and a transition that occurred um, again, as it sometimes does in uh, schools at uh, late notice. So uh, we start the year, as we should do every year, uh, obviously pulling on the same oar. Um, I'm sure that we'll hit some choppy water because Patty will make sure of that at some point along the year. <laughs> tonight, uh, tonight. Uh, tonight. 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 Right. She's been waiting a couple of months. Sadly, <laughs> sooner than some of us hoped. Um, but again, I just, um, you know, I think we're starting off with some good, um, good feelings, good energy, um, and that when these choppy things do occur, um, hopefully we're all focused on them for the common good of our students, yes. staff, uh, and the community. And um, with good communication and respect all around, we will uh, tackle hard problems the way we should. Yep. So, that's a rather wordy uh, welcome to everybody to start off a good year. I hope you all had a great summer. Um, and we'll move on to a review and approval of the minutes sure. from way back in June. I make a motion to approve the minutes for June 7, 2017. Second. Okay. Anybody have any further comments or anything like that? No? Okay. okay. All in favor? Aye. 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 So move. Moving right along. Um, financial little statement. Patty. So I emailed you two statements. One was the final FY17 um, budget. And as you can see, we spent every penny. There was a zero left as a budget balance. Um, you do see there is a number in the encumbrance field, and that is for some of the year-end projects that we had planned to do that were not com that are not totally complete, and we're still awaiting payment. Um, and you will see in your pile of warrants that one of them will say FY17 encumbrance. So that's mm -hmm. uh, just a function. It's separated so that the accounting can be done properly at the town. Yeah. Uh, and then the other one I gave you was the FY18 uh, beginning for July and August. And as you can see, our encumbrances aren't in because the teachers and our IAs weren't back as of August 31st. Well, they were, but they hadn't been paid yet. Um, so next report, we'll have the encumbrances, uh, all of the payroll uh, encumbered. And um, it, it takes me one or two months between, we, we do a plan of this is who's gonna be charged to what account, and then when I do the reconciliation, sometimes there's some boo-boos so that we have to fix, so something might look over and under. But I do plan on doing a continuous report every year of the variances. Uh, it's something I started at Frontier, and I think it'll be helpful for all the school committees. Yeah. So when we start seeing budget variances. Um, <clears throat> we do have seven warrants for you to sign this evening, and they total $76,101.27. Now we've got two issues that have popped up. Um, I'll start with the one that we became aware of today. Our hot water heater is dead. Okay. Um, it had been tripping and we thought it was the pump, so we had the pump replaced and it tripped again today. And when they investigated why it was tripping, there was chunks of metal which means the interior of the water heater is pretty much shot. Yeah. They were able to get it going, but it's only a matter of time before it shuts off again. Okay. Um, we've got a preliminary estimate of $15,000 to replace the hot water heater, and this is not something that has been budgeted. Um, what I will recommend to the committee uh, and would have you vote on is that there are some payroll savings with our changes in the administration, and I think that we should use some of those savings so we can get the new water heater uh, ordered and installed as soon as possible. Yeah. 
Um, Did you get a couple estimates? We, we, we have to go out and get the estimates. Yeah, okay. so, yeah. But we're thinking $15,000 would do it. Okay. okay. Do, while they're doing that, do you think um, they can, I, uh, capital improvement, or capital improvement committee is meeting tonight. They, I just, I, nobody I think has set in requests yet, but I was wondering when they do that, if they could look over anything else in there, if they, I know we, I guess we've already done the pumps, but if there's mm -hmm. anything else large for the school that, might come up that we could kind of put on the towns. Well, last year during the capital uh, process, they the asked us to them. give them yes. our five-year plan and we did that. Right. Um, and what the capital committee had come back is they gave us a, a certain amount of money to start replacing all the flooring in right. a five-year plan. So yeah. we've been starting that. And they also Good. gave us money to start changing the locks on the door and we already had some money. Yep. So now we've got enough combined money, but that's a much more complex Right. project so that's Takes probably some something time. we're going to start over the winter months into the spring right um and but they ha and the the hot water heater replacement is also on that list <laughs> it just unfortunately it exactly it, yeah. it blew a little faster than than we anticipated right. okay um so i don't know if you want to vote on that and then i'll give you the second issue which i um, Why don't you give us a second version? Okay. <laughs> All right. So, um, I, I, unfortunately, I'm just going to make you aware of this problem. Uh, due to unforeseen um, circumstances, I was not um, able to get a resolution, and it's because it's a busing issue, and um, the Gripko family had a death in their family, so I was not able to talk with Mr. Gripko today to see if we've found a resolution. Okay. But we've got. Um, a certain area in town that we can't send buses to so we send flex vans and it's I believe up in the Eagle Brook area yeah. I'm not familiar with this area the, right now we send two vans up there and we have too many children so we may need to have to add a third van and if we had to add a third van to go up to Eagle Brook the full year cost would be about twenty three thousand dollars so we've only had, I don't know how many days of school. It's going to be about $129 a day. Wait, is this to pick up Eagle Brook kids or people no. who live in that Anybody vicinity? It's, that it's children who live in that vicinity who attend Deerfield Elementary. And why can't we get a Gripco bus up there? I don't. The, the, because the underpass they, for one. Yeah, there's. And then there's just it's a. Steep. We've been doing flex vans up there. I've been here five years. We've always done flex vans. Someplace prior to my five years, they decided that the bus kept getting stuck, mm -hmm. so they switched it to flex vans. And we've always been able to do it with two. I, I actually, I'm not gonna. When I first got here, it was three. We were able to cut it down to two. And now it looks like we may have to go back up to three. But as I said, Mr. Gripko was trying to try to re resolve this for us. Mm -hmm. um, and, and as I said, so unfortunately, I was not able to speak with him. Anything we have to take it, action? It, it, no? Do you know, is it that underpass? Is that what it is? It's people who live beyond the, the rail That's tunnel? That's what I'm thinking. Oh, it's how many can really there be? Tight, I'm not sure. Oh, faculty from up there may have kids or anybody else up on that Pine Ridge or yeah, they would go from the other the side. Way the way he he said that if he had the sixth graders come down, it would be like a mile walk for them to get to the bottom of a, I think it's a hill, yeah, to get to where they could hill. pick them up with the big bus. Yeah. And I don't, I, I don't think that, I, I think the law requires that the bus not be within a mile. I wonder I, if there's a way to do um, shuttle from that end you know so you had a big bus waiting and then you did a like and a, that's sort of what mr gripko was working on if he could do that um okay so nothing we have to take action right now on nope okay. i just want to make you aware of the up. problem um and then if uh, we have to take an action before october right i just want you to be aware that we may be i would probably go to to school choice to look for some funding there right okay i would just uh, if, if there's a, a cohort there that is Eagle Brook staff or faculty kids, that we may want to talk a little bit with them about a pool from Eagle Brook down to that site where the bus can't pick them up. Just a suggestion. Mm -hmm. I mean, if it's a whole bunch of other kids, then that's different. But collaborate. Yeah. Okay. Yeah. Okay. So let's uh, motion to approve um, spending money on getting a new hot water heater. Make a motion to approve going out for bids for a water heater. Do I need to put a figure on that? 
Um, Mr. Lesko is giving me 15,000 okay. as an estimate, um, as a, right. as but a, I do believe when we had it on the capital plan, it was $25,000, so I'm, that's a, I'm that's kind of, water yeah, I'm kind of stuck right. uh, between the 15 and the 25. So maybe not to exceed 20? Right. And without coming back to house or something. Well, or, we would do it. We'd have, you'd have to do it anyway. So you can't if wait. it goes, we got to get it. We have to get it done. Right. Okay. I make a motion to approve. Um, a water heat not to exceed 20,000. Okay. Second. Are you sure that's enough? No. Yeah. Do you want to? Want your stock? Well, we can do 25, and then if we don't use it, we don't use it. Now we'll, I'll be able to report back to you what the actual cost is. I do know, I, I had a conversation with Mr. Lesko that he had it on the five year plan at a cost of 25,000, but then he did tell me he met with a company today and he was comfortable with the 15. That's why I'm saying maybe 20. All right. So I'll second Trevor's motion. Okay. Okay. All in favor? Aye. 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 Thank you. Thank you. Thank That's, you. Sorry, I had to have an issue. Where is the water heater? And it pushes water from one water heater throughout the whole building. Correct. It's, it's down in the boiler. Yeah. Okay. Okay. Uh, can I? Let me ask you a question. I guess. Well, you're still up. Um, did we? Uh, and maybe I'm sorry if it's the same for Tina, but of the money that we had at the end of last year. 50,000 and we had the list of things that were to be done with it mm -hmm. was where, well, how many of those things were done with that money um, when you Tina said, has that in her summer update report you do mm -hmm. so I will we can get we'll do it later yes. it's fine. okay um, okay any, any more questions for Patty anybody is that a hand raised or is that no, no? no? Okay. <laughs> yes. good job uh, public comment time for public comment I have a question is this the right time for a question? It depends what the question is. Really, the, the public comment is just to sort of comment and tell us what you're thinking. Okay. And if it's a question that we want to answer or we think is appropriate to answer, we may answer. Okay. If it's something that we need to discuss or think about in the future, we may talk about it a month later. Thank you. Um, I have two kids at the school, and I was hoping to hear the rationale for the four-day Labor Day weekend. Um, which was very disruptive to students settling into routines and to working families. And I was also hoping to hear whether this was a permanent change, and if so, can there be discussion throughout the school year about it? Um, and it seemed really inconsistent with other area schools, so I was confused about okay. the change. Have you brought that question to any administrators yet? No. Okay, so I don't, I'm not trying to put you off at all, uh, it's just that uh, we have a lot going on here, um, and we don't know that answer, but it seems like it's something you should call and talk to uh, the superintendent. In my car. Uh, yeah, and then she will discuss it. Okay. So I'm sure some people loved it, and some people didn't. <laughs> um, that whole easing of kids and parents into the school year. So. Make sure, she, make sure she's done. All right, all set? Yes. Um, actually, I was going to ask about the Eagle Road issue with the, um, with the buses because okay. it seems like it's costing us a lot of money um, for them to get it. And I've been up at Eagle Road and I've noticed they have a yellow bus that has Eagle Road School on it. And my suggestion was going to be to talk to them and see if they would round up all the kids on their bus and bring it down to the bottom of the hill. Mm -hmm. And, you know, that would be one way of saving us a lot of money. Mm -hmm. And the other thing I was going to ask is, is there at any time in the budget that you're going to look at repaving the whole front of the school? It's hazardous walking. Um, and it's very difficult pushing a wheelchair through all those cracks. Mm -hmm. Good, good comments, appreciate it. I think we talked about the Eagle Book One a little bit, so yeah. good to hear a vote of confidence. And then um, when we get to the budget, I'm sure that'll be one of those capital improvement type of things for us to talk about. Anyone else? No, okay. Um, so uh, let's move along to uh, unfinished business. We have a discussion item on student transportation. <laughs> Who wants to tackle that? Oh, thank I you. Um, in our last meeting, we discussed. 
Thank you. I'm sorry. In our last meeting, we discussed um, amending or adding um, a slight uh, sentence to the student transportation policy, and it is number nine. Mm -hmm. uh, students will not be released from the vehicle, meaning the bus or van, without a parent, guardian, or designated caregiver. These are these are students in grades kindergarten to grade three. Mm -hmm. They need the bus driver needs to make eye contact with the, with a parent or an adult designated to take care of them. However, um, our practice has been, or a sibling in grade four or higher, with the parent and guardian approval. So we want to because the practice in some schools has been that the sibling in grade four or higher is able to take the to you know walk the student off to the house or mm -hmm. wherever with the parent approval, we'd like to actually have it stated in our policy. Yeah. Um, so what we had asked is if you agree to this, that you would vote, make a motion and vote to accept this change in our policy EEA. One question I have is, is the um, parent approval a kind of a sign thing that they would do at the beginning of the year? Okay. Yes, yep. we would ask that they would sign it and send it to school and the teacher would bring it to the office. Sounds good. I make a motion to approve the changes to the busing policy, um, section nine. Okay. Second. Uh, second, just one little comment, just the last sentence, if this occurs, the child will be returned to the school. Mm -hmm. That's, not, that's our practice. Yes. That, if, if this does not occur. I, I agree, it's, it's an odd sentence. <laughs> just, um, you, you read that too? Yeah, yeah it, it didn't make sense, but that's the way it had been written. Years we ago. all know what the intent is. Yeah, I'm not sure it's if they don't have it. Gotcha. I think we should put not in there, okay. you know. So, uh, sorry, you made a motion seconded? Oh, okay, so. Mm -hmm. um, all in favor? Aye. 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 Great. So moved. Can I, just, can I go you. back to the Eagle Brook for one thing? I just want to make one comment. You should really that would order be what we're doing. I'm sorry. Order but, things. Yeah. Yeah. You know how Dr. Perry is. Yeah. Okay. <laughs> that would be the worst case scenario. Mr. Gr that Mr. Gripko doesn't want to go there adding a bus, so we, he sure. is working he's on working it. On I, I, sure. I don't want to make it seem like he's advocating to add the bus. Right. He's sure. trying everything in his power not to add right. the bus. Okay. Yeah. And so are you. Yes. Correct. Correct. But I just don't want to make it think that we're just going there. Yeah, right. Yeah, yeah. No, right. No, no. Okay. Gotcha. No, no. Yep. Yep. Thank you. Okay. Uh, so we voted on that one. And new business uh, summer building maintenance update. Who wants to tackle that one? Who lived in the building longest this summer? Oh, sorry. <laughs> <laughs> Your shirt got caught over here. Uh, so summer updates. We are in the process of replacing a carpet in uh, the carpets in the three classrooms. We have one replaced in third grade, and Great. you guys should take a visit and look mm -hmm. at it. It makes a room look huge. Um, and the other two are on the docket to be uh, installed in the fall. Nice. That while, happened. While school's in session? While we're. Well, probably during so. a vacation of some sort. We did this last one over the four day Labor Day um, <laughs> <laughs> break. So. So we'll yeah. find, you know, if we can find a couple of days to fit it, yeah. we'll do that. And uh, the drainage out front, as you noticed, which probably comes with some of the comment of we need to repave everything that was fixed. So hopefully the pooling will be eliminated out front so that's not so hazardous in the winter. Yeah. And um, clocks and window tinting are on deck and they're in the preliminary stages of scheduling. But what we are most happy about may not even have been on there. Um, in partnership with Dr. Carey and Bob Lusk and the custodians, we are getting some um, playground updates to pre-K. So we're getting some wood chips in and removing okay. some um, bushes that kind of have been a nuisance and plants. So nice. that's a big help. So, we're so notice the courtyards are starting to get cleaned up too or cut yeah, back. Yeah, we're so working really on great. some of the courtyards too. So they've been busy. Yes. <laughs> yeah. yeah, looks good. Thank you. Okay, can, can I, so would this be the time for me to go back to as our sort of fiduciary responsibility on the money that we're spending? Mm -hmm. The 50,000 that we had left over, did we put it towards all of the items that we talked about at our last school committee meeting? We did. Money is encumbered. It made the Wrong projects. carts? That, that looks like that was They're, done because that's not outstanding on my encumbrance list. Okay. I'm looking at because we ordered two Chromebook carts, correct? 
They're here. Yeah. 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 Smoke detectors in the building. That have that's not that hasn't been scheduled yet. That has to go out to bid. Is that we still have the money for that yes. from the fifty thousand yes. from last it's year? It's encumbered. Yes. Okay. So of the encumbrances that, that you have that fifty, they're still going to all of these things that we voted on. Yes, sir. Mm -hmm. Great. We did not deviate from the list. <laughs> Good. Good. Uh, okay, summer programs. It's going down the list. It's discussion item, plans, procedures, routines. Who's mm -hmm. covering that? Um, I actually would like to ask Louise if she would speak to the summer programs, the great reading camps mm -hmm. and the math camp. Mm -hmm. And we had some Deerfield students also over at uh, camp invention and then we had ladybug camp too yeah. right so yeah. please well we have um every summer we serve children who um would benefit from extra support in reading and a few years ago with kim coming on board we expanded to preschool of children who have been identified as those who would benefit from some early language intervention so kim runs on um, every year a camp that she changes the name of this Summer. year it was Ladybug Camp this year, and, um, and we had a uh, reading camp for children K through 5, and all together we had 101 ch children from across the district attending that program, which we housed here. Then we also had a writing program, that was an enrichment program for children who enjoy writing, and that was the second week we overlapped in weeks. And we had, um, I believe, uh, Jennifer was there, I believe we had 18 children, 18 children, and um, Jennifer and Jillian uh, worked with kids for enrichment, and that was a delight. They gave a little performance at the end. We also have started this year something called Camp Invention. We'll change the name, and I'll get to that later. <laughs> Camp Invention, that um, was a district program. We ran it housed in Waitley. We try to share the the um, responsibility of housing these programs. And so uh, that one was housed in Waitley. That was a week-long program for inventions, science, engineering, design. And this was our first year out. We had, um, I think it was about 35 kids. Yeah. And um, it was a big success. Yeah. In fact, we got some write-ups in the paper. Um, we're changing the name because I got a letter from an attorney um, in Ohio <laughs> for a camp invention that um, had trademarked the name. And so, um, as, as I explained when I asked three teachers to brainstorm what they thought was a good name, we didn't do trademark research because we aren't making money. So anyway, that, so, but we will change the name because I'm not interested in hearing from attorneys about the name <laughs> of my camps. So, um, so anyway, so, but the camps, um, we served, about 180 children all together this summer. There was a math program for children who uh, would benefit from additional math through the special ed program. We also had um, a program for early childhood, um, early childhood special needs. And we had um, the program here that works with special needs students. So 180 to 190 children were served in the district this summer through our programs. So it was pretty exciting. A combination of enrichment, extension, and support for students who need who would benefit. So great. Thank you. Thank you all for participating in that. It's a lot of fun. <laughs> Apparently far reaching publicity too for Ohio. Yeah, University. Ohio, well, it's amazing. Yeah. But um, I guess Even once you hit the press because <laughs> the Greenfield Recorder came and covered Oh. Um, and wrote an article with pictures, and so I nice. suppose somebody's on some kind of listserv or yep. streaming of whenever that term comes up, yep. write a nasty letter. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> Can we call it Inventing Camp instead of Camp Invention? <laughs> <laughs> it's probably somebody else, right? Yeah, um, we're, we're going to call it Union 38 Camp. Nobody. Yeah. <laughs> no, that's right. So we'll get creative. Yeah. But that, that was a lesson in, to me in uh, mm -hmm. trademark. Great. All right. Thank you. All right. Personnel update. Team. So we have a. a and so tell me how I'm supposed to go about this. Do I tell you every personnel that we hired? What are you looking for? <laughs> <laughs> I was gonna go. kind of wing it, and then I have to wing it. 
think you want to just give us a flavor of how many new teachers are in the building, how many okay. new staff are in the building, whether you fired anybody yet. It is in the packet. Not yet. Don't plan on it. It was um, in the packet. It is in the packet. Yep. If you could yep. look, there's quite a few people. Yeah, we have a, that's why I was like, oh boy, we have a lot of them. Um, Let's start with the um, exciting story of the last minute appointment that kept yeah. us all on our toes. So <laughs> we did finally get a third grade long term sub, which nice. we were crossing our fingers to get and hired her, Sarah Chiaverini, who's fabulous, um, Thursday prior to school starting. So Great. that was, we no after, <laughs> after three interview committees, and uh, yeah, so it was a long, a long process, but you know, it worked and out. Could you also mention that? She got hired on Thursday, and I think Friday, or she had the students on two days, and then they tore, they took her room apart yes. and put in the tiles, and then sure. put her. Oh my goodness! Yeah, she oh, that was, was the classroom that. Yeah, the was the was the that was the one that had been leaking so much. She's yeah. been uh, very flexible and able to go with the flow. Wonderful. So that's a good thing. Yes, um, you know we have a new first grade teacher, Layla Hazen. Mm -hmm. We have many um, new new returning, if you will, staff that were long-term subs last year that came on this year, and uh, quite a few IAs, um, right. so about seven IAs and a long-term sub IA joining us. Wonderful. Yeah. Super. Great. Thank you. more information on the next one if you want. Oh, Be more prepared. <laughs> is the, I, quick question, just because I don't have kids here anyway, sure. is the... Um, is the music teacher uh, the same individual who came on and, and did the long-term subbing yes. at the end of last year? Yeah, yeah. yeah. Okay. Um, looks like so. Any questions for Tina on anything? No. Happened so far. Okay. Um, so, designation of an official delegate to the Mass Association of School Committees Joint Conference. I assume is I, what that is. I offered to be the delegate. Okay. Anyone else is going? Okay. I'm hoping to go, but it's that's okay. sort of the last minute. Yeah, yeah, usually. sure. So, so but you'll be the delegate. Be delegate. Mm -hmm. Signed up. Any objections? No? Oh, we, thank you for that. We will, yeah. we will officially designate you. All right. Alrighty. Okay. That's so great. I, I think we need a motion to vote. We'll give you a motion. Okay. Thank you. We moved, yes. Yeah. Okay, so. A point, Trevor. And I second. Daniel is our representative to the conference. Great. Second, all in favor. Boom. So moved. <coughs> thank you. Um, okay, uh, looks like some discussion on the Play 60 grant, which I think Patty's name was on the application mm -hmm. for it, so do you want to just cover that quickly? Sure. Um, we were notified um, by the Department of Elementary and Secondary Education um, Office of Nutrition uh, at the end of last year of a grant opportunity through Play 60. Um, we were in the middle of submitting it when, for all five schools, um, when we realized that we were then told it was also sponsored by the New England Dairy Association, so it had to have something to do with dairy. So we were looking for hydration stations for the for the kitchens, and I tried to make a. If if you have, the more hydrated that you are, the more nutrients from the milk you'll absorb. <laughs> they kind of didn't buy that, but. Deerfield was in need of a milk cooler, right? <laughs> so we did submit um, uh, the application for the hydration station and a milk cooler. So they yeah. gave us the milk cooler. Wonderful. Um, and they came <laughs> and they made a presentation last week of the check. Um, yeah. And because it is a grant, the school committee does have to vote to accept that. Sure. And we have to do a few activities around the milk cooler, which uh, Kim and Tina and Mary. Um, Delusa, yes, Deluca right. or Delusa? Delusa. Delusa. She got married over the summer. Um, <clears throat> are very excited to do. We're going to do a physical activity tie-in. We're going to do a healthy eating tie-in. And what's really exciting is even before we were doing this, Mary was really excited about doing smoothies, which how much perfect can that yes. fit in with the, with, with the New England Dairy Association. Absolutely. So we're, we're really excited about doing that. And as, um, we, as I said, we do have the check and we will start looking for a new milk cooler. And then we're gonna have like a little, you know, celebration yeah. of the new milk cooler. Take photos and send it back. Yes, to and post them on yeah. our website. Wonderful. Okay. Great. And, and so, I, a quick motion to accept. May it, I just thank? I just would like to thank Patty for going yeah. ahead and writing this for all five schools yes. and, and the AS for getting it. Thank and you hopefully, Patty. next time we'll be more prepared to know who co-sponsors. <laughs> 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 Did any, anybody else just get any money from No, only Deerfield. Okay. Make, make a motion to approve the um, 
the grant, accept the grant for um, for the play sixty for the new one. Oh, cool. Thank you. Second, okay, all in favor? Aye. 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 Review of the food service report. Who wants to review the oh. food service report? No, 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 I was just, um, no, I was just looking. Um, we're moving so fast. I, <laughs> so, um, as you know, I sent the report. We were ending the year with quite a bit of. Um, in some of our schools, quite a bit of a, uh, um, a loss, oh, yeah, yep. and uh, the loss, the losses were adding up over the years. And the law is about three years old now, or the rule that we have to make it. We have, we can't just ignore it. We have to take it out of that year's budget mm -hmm. and make it whole. So the money that we were losing, uh, we needed to uh, find someone to help us analyze all of our kitchens, all of our uh, lunch programs, and to help us understand where we were losing it and how we can improve it and what's going on. So we hired a consultant, his name was Jim Halstead, Halstead who came and did the report that you all received. Mm -hmm. And they did a time analysis and uh, an analysis on the money we're spending and the food and how much food is left over. We, we found places where there's expired food that, mm -hmm. So they did that analysis, they came up with the, the report, and then we presented it to you. As a result of that, one of the recommendations was to hire an interim food service director that would actually put the rules in place that we need to be following. We didn't have any procedures in place, we didn't really know what we were doing, one person left the job, and then we were left and we really didn't have anywhere to go. So. We were able to uh, hire Flory Page. She spent 29 years at DA in charge of their food service program, and now she belongs to a consortium of food consultants um, out of the uh, out of uh, Eastern New York and Western Mass. So she's been working very hard, diligently, in our programs and bringing them up to speed. Right. So. Um, I'll hand it up to you. So um, there were a lot of recommendations in the report um, that, that our, we were overstaffed, we weren't using our commodities uh, to the best of their use, uh, our menus weren't terribly um, appealing to children, um, our presentation was not visually appealing to, to children, and we need to get our participation up, which means our revenue up, and we need to decrease our costs. Uh, the major recommendation that came out of that is that we have one food service director for all five schools. Just like we do have one maintenance director, we have one business manager, um, and that is what we're asking the committees to consider and vote next month at the joint meeting that we would hire uh, one joint food service director for all of the schools in order to so that we can have efficiencies in buying um, real quick the, the bid we bid all our food every year but the, the 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 people who bid like now you can't just order one container of cottage cheese you got to have five you can only buy it in five well no one school needs five five pound containers of cottage cheese so we have to start purchasing differently and because we are a regional and a union that it makes it difficult um, so we would want one food service director to help us purchase and put an ordering system so we can distribute and charge each school equally. Um, so we want to do efficiencies. We want to have the same menus in the schools and have the same standards as Dr. Carey was saying. Um, and so that is what Flory has come on and helped us do. Start, start putting together a we couldn't go out and hire a food service director because we didn't know what we needed. Right. So Flory has come in and done an assessment and so that we can write a job description and say this is the type of person, these are the skills they need to have. And also, we have no policies or no procedures in any of the kitchens. Everybody sort of does their own thing. All five kitchens mm -hmm. do something differently. And when that funnels into the financials, for me, it makes it, makes it very difficult. Yeah. So we're doing that. Like you will do A, B, C. So we're, we're, where we want to hire the person, they'll have the practices of how we want things done um, already set up. Um, I don't know, Flory, if you want to add anything. I think you've covered it well. We've taken a broad approach and done 
some quality improvements, some employee training, some staffing reductions. Um, all of the staff that we've met with understand that the objective this year is to move their meals produced per man hour. So in other right. words, how many meals they produce during the time that they're working, how many they serve to the children, to a number of 10 from a number around six. And the industry standard is up around 15 wow. and even higher. So they understand that that's what our objective is and we'll be keeping them posted as we move into the, the next month on how they're doing. And I yeah. think that they are, they're doing better. We, we did take some cuts. They're not drastic cuts, but they should make a difference. And of course, the magic formula is to serve more meals. So mm -hmm. making the meals appealing to the kids and serving more meals right. is definitely going to make a difference. And there were some instances in which we were charging less money for products we were selling than we were paying for them, so we mm -hmm. rectified those things. And Mary and I have exchanged pricing strategies on some of the items that you sell here at Deerfield and that are sold throughout the rest of the district. So Great. I'm optimistic that we're going to make a big difference and hopefully at least cut that in half the first year and head yeah. to a further success the following year. Thank you for your help. Yeah. Great. Um, can I just ask, I saw something come through my email quickly today from the PTA about a um, about uh, a, I don't know if the word is drastic, but a, a, a real need for kitchen subs. We yes. are desperately in need of subs, Patty. If you want well, to speak to that, if you want sure. me to, just, is it real, uh, just want to make sure it's not real, it sort of did something that has brought us to that no. place. No, like, we've never okay. had okay. a. We've net. We've always had a shortage of of substitutes. So when someone has to take time off, they are, they have a okay. personal you know, a sick day or a personal emergency. We have no we have, we do not have a long list of substitutes that we will come in and fill in. And we really are looking um, for substitutes. And anyone who's interested, please call Rhonda Lutenegger at 413-665-1155 so that we can get you Corey fingerprinted and on our substitute list. Okay. So it was just a call for call for action to keep that stable, if you will, bench and list of people available. It had nothing to do with the cuts that you've made. Oh, just no, it, it does a little bit in that now people really don't, there's not any extra Leeway. time. No extra Last time. night someone asked about the downtime. There's no downtime in yeah. the day for any of our food service workers anymore. Yeah. So if someone's missing, they are really sadly yeah. missed. So yeah. we want to not put people in the position of having to work short staff. Yeah. Right. And that, as Patty mentioned, has been an ongoing problem. It is in food services everywhere. Right. So. We're hoping to maybe line up a few grandmothers who'd like to come and spend the day with us. That'd be great. Great. Thank you. Um, okay, so any questions about food? Besides making no us votes now. This is October. We would. Yes, so we were bringing you the decision. proposal yep. um, in, in, in September and hopefully we'll vote it, it'll be on the agenda to vote in October. Okay. For a hiring date of when? Uh, we, we will move pretty quickly uh, yeah. after that because uh, we we do have a we do have a budget this year um, and we don't want to exceed our budget with yeah. uh, you know I, I love Flory but um, we yep. need to have a permanent person on board as soon as possible so uh, if the meeting's October fifth I would hope to get it posted and out on the following Monday which now that I say that is probably Columbus well, Day yes. so Tuesday, yeah. Tuesday yeah. we will have a, a job description and a posting that would go up on Tuesday. Okay. Uh, designation of policy review subcommittee member. Yes, we have uh, two years ago, uh, before Marty Barrett left, she had um, revised many policies to get them up to date, and mm -hmm. they're all on our webpage. Uh, however, last year, <laughs> I mean, uh, right? they, the uh, Massachusetts Association of School uh, Councils or School Committees actually. Uh, had gone through them again, and they have suggested many, many, many more changes. Some of them, and most of them, are just a word. Uh, for instance, changing the word um, handicapped to disabled. But some of them, um, the laws have changed, the laws keep changing, they keep going into session and coming up with different rules. So we need to enact the, uh, the policy subcommittee again to start that work. And so last time we had one um, member from each of the four unions, or the four towns. Mm -hmm. And so that's what we would like again, if, if possible, someone from Deerfield would be on that committee. I've been, I've been going to do it again. <laughs> I did it before. Okay. 
I'd be willing to do it again. Thank you. Wonderful. That's really nice. I know you guys worked hard on that last time. And yeah. It was a lot, a lot of work. Right. Yeah, okay, sure. You are here by appointment. Yeah. Um, I think <laughs> we should vote. I appointed, but let's vote as well. Let's vote. Well, we'll make a motion to, to appoint, um, to appoint Mary Raymond okay. to, to the Policy Review Committee. Thank you. Uh, second that motion. All in favor? Aye. Aye. Thank you. Did you really have any morning meetings? No. No. They were all at 5.30? Okay. Yeah. Great. <laughs> <laughs> the budget meetings that we used to have at 6.30 in the morning. Yeah. <laughs> okay, so moving on to reports. I have nothing to add. Our collaborative reporter is not here tonight. And so we'll move on to a principal's report. I have nothing to add. <laughs> no, <I'm> just kidding. <laughs> <laughs> so, let's see if I can get away with that. So Kim and I are working really hard on a collaboration, community building, and communication. So our report is going to reflect that rather than looking at individual grade levels. So the first project that we want to talk about that's going on in the building, we're just so excited and thrilled, is the UBU project which is based off of books, UBU and Only You, that um, helps everyone learn that we're all unique in different ways and we can contribute. And what is happening is everyone in the building is painting rocks and we will have an art installation. One idea um, is out in the courtyard mm -hmm. where, um, where we can, uh, where they'll all come together and we'll take a look at them and they'll be like a little river and if they're based on fish, so they're gonna be fish. Mm -hmm. uh, but the school adjustment counselor, big thank you to Catherine Richard, our art teacher, mm -hmm. the school adjustment counselor, uh, Colleen Smith, the school psychologist, Giselle uh, Richardson, and Lisa Gaylor for really bringing this to us. They're working hard, uh, the art class, everyone, everyone in art is hearing the story and creating a, um, a rock. It's, it's amazing. So if you guys are available, I would suggest you come in and create a rock as well because you're part sure. of our community. Sure, love to. Um, and then we have a Hurricane Harvey coin drive. Uh, oh, right, so Kim's right on here. <laughs> and we want to thank you to the, the PTA for partnering with us to help um, fund this program. So it's a great partnership great. for them. And then a Hurricane Harvey, we have that coin drive that went out. Gretchen Law, thank you for um, bringing that to us so we can help the victims. We may have to change it to Hurricane Harvey and Irma. Mm -hmm. So we'll Tough look for weeks. that. Yeah. So I, I actually, the coin jar might be out front, so you can notice that because I hauled it. It's getting really heavy to haul <laughs> back in. Um, it, this doesn't really affect the entire building, but I thought I'd bring the update that Nature's Classroom is on the way. The fifth grade headed out. There was one little flip. The bus uh, kind of broke down the way there, one of them. Uh, they all got safely on another bus. I think they were a little hungry, um, but that was about it. So they're there. So that's, uh, we're happy. It's good to have a story. Huh? Right, Miss Smith? Great. <laughs> <I know. laughs> and then um, I thought we should talk about school council. So we're yes. our first meeting will be October fourth. Um, big thank you for to the PTA for helping to uh, with the voting process and getting the reps for the parents. And thank you to the MTA for getting our two teacher reps. Um, I'm aware of who the two teacher reps are. We thank you, Lori Roach and Kathy Dorfall. Oh, yay! Wonderful. So that will be good. Um, our, like I said, our first meeting is October 4th, so after that we'll, we'll look at uh, organizing our calendars and coming up with regular dates. Um, facilities I already covered, which is on the list. We talked about the wood ships and everything in there. Yeah. And then we have a lot of communication um, initiatives. We have many modes of communication that are already in place, and then the next two pages really talk about um, what are some of our new initiatives and coming soon? I, I know I don't. You guys can read them, but I did yeah. want to highlight a few that we want to right. update the student, the staff, and student handbook to include best practices for communication for family and partnering, and um, our weekly la uh, staff update letter that we put in there, and a lot of parent trainings that. Uh, we are going to be looking into with a survey, thanks to Jillian Andrews, who's come right. up with a survey that we'll be introducing at an upcoming faculty meeting. So there's a lot of initiatives that are in place uh, that we're working towards. Wonderful. It's good to see. Thank you. Thank you very much for your work on that. Great. Good. Pace yourself.
Yeah. Hate support is the beginning of the school year. <laughs> yeah, so that's why some of these are already there and some of them are coming soon. So. <laughs> Uh, we know where we're end goal is. That's right. <laughs> uh, any questions? No. Okay. Thank you so much for all the work you're doing. It's great. Thanks to our staff and yes. few here today. They're, they're working just as hard as we are. I'm sure. Superintendent's report. Thank you. Um, I'd like to ask Luis to come forward and just give a quick talk about what our plans are for the principal search mm -hmm. and uh, our timeline. Okay. So, um, first of all, I want to thank this dynamic duo. It's been a pleasure to work so far with them. Um, and uh, you're right, pacing. Um, so I just wanted to give you um, an idea of what our process will be, or I'm proposing this process for uh, the search. This is a timeline um, based on one I conducted a search last year, a very successful search in another school in the district. And um, this was roughly our timeline. So um, beginning the process in December because that's when um, the spring is when people will be looking. And if we start too prematurely, I've seen uh, districts that have started too soon, had a principal who then found another job in the spring. So the ideal optimal time is to begin the advertising in January and to do the really conduct the search in the spring. Prior to that, um, we want to uh, get a lot of information from faculty, families, community about what the um, characteristics of the principal that they hope will lead the school. And uh, so uh, staff surveys, uh, focus groups with uh, families and staff to glean that and then from that write the job description and on the back of the sheet is what the state standards are about uh, school-based administrators. Integrating state standards about what administrators um, characteristics and what um, qualifications they need to have but also reflecting what the community, the staff and the families feel is important for Deerfield so that when we go out to look, we're looking for somebody for Deerfield. So this is the process I'm proposing beginning in December and going forward with that um, timeline from there. Um, having representatives from um, the uh, school committee rep is what I'm recommending. A school committee rep, um, parental reps, staff reps, and um, I don't think I left out. Oh, one of the things we did in another search is had a principal from the district on the committee because a sitting principal who could then be a, a person that uh, people from the community could ask, you know, is this something that principals do? And it was very useful. I, I asked, uh, Ben Barshevsky was on another search, but I'd like to propose that we include a principal from uh, the district to reflect some ideas about what, what the job really is. Yeah. I would facilitate the process. I'd be a non-voting member, but I would just facilitate and um, make the process happen. Okay, great. So that's what I'm recommending, and um, I like to fill the staff in, but I wanted you to be the first to see what I'm proposing for the schedule and the kinds of activities that we'll do to make it as inclusive as, <clears throat> as we can and um, reflecting professional standards and the community. Great. Yeah. My, uh, my only just question, comment mm -hmm. is just these focus groups and getting the information from the focus groups. Mm -hmm. I'm just wondering whether you want to, you want those to be part of the advertising, the position and stuff. I just wonder whether you want to get those started a little earlier than mid-December, but just a comment. I'm sure you're processing and thinking about how to gather those, but it seems like yeah. if you start that in mid-December, well, the reason we did, at least in another school we did that, is it was all the conversations and the suggestions were very fresh on the minds yeah. when we went out and advertised, like the yeah. words were reverberating in our heads when we went and interviewed people of yeah. what, um, and actually I did a, one thing that was used, so a word splash took in all of, the, all of the suggestions that people had and then plugged them into the computer and there were some very important words that popped out that that community valued. And so um, 
we could start earlier. Starting it too soon <coughs> makes it a very drawn out yeah. process. No, I guess what I mean is, you, so I guess you'll have, when you say mid-December, is that a time when you'll have all of your, you'll already have, I mean, you're going to decide probably centrally about those survey questions and stuff like that. The committee, the, the committee, the committee will decide, will? yes. So, okay, I'm just, you know. So first form it. drag on. Yeah, what, what we did, um, what worked very effectively in my last search was, we formed a committee. Um, the first task is to get each constituency to elect from their constituency who they want representing them. So the we'll suggest on yeah. the search committee. So <laughs> you as the school committee determine, you will determine who you want to represent the school committee. That wouldn't be our job. The staff will decide who they want in whatever um, process they determine will make sense. Um, the um, parent community as well. And um, so once the committee is formed, we looked at research on what was important to um, ask people, what kinds of information was really important to ensure we had before we created the survey. So the committee created the survey, I didn't, yeah. based on reading research and based on knowing their community, what kinds of questions. So then the survey went out, <clears throat> and then we had a focus group. So in case there were things people really wanted to say that weren't included in our survey, we had a very high um, response rate on the survey. And then we tabulated and looked at, you know, what are the what are the characteristics you hope for in the principal? And words popped out. There were things that, you know, good communication, collaboration. So we made sure we wrote that into the the advertisement. So. The first task is to create a process for creating a committee. So that's fall. Then that committee creates the surveys and is part of the focus group meetings. So that it isn't me running it, it's the committee. Then hearing from the community, hearing from the staff. So that, I mean, I'm putting it out there because that's a process that was really um, effective. And one thing I can say about the last search is I heard from many, many people that they felt it was very inclusive. Mm. Um, and that's, we want to take right. our time to make sure we're doing Yeah, yeah, that. no, I'm, not, I'm certainly not yeah. questioning your um, approach to this in terms mm -hmm. of, I mean, laying it out. It just seems, if I'm reading it right, you're expecting in the month of December to both develop surveys, get questions out, get focus groups, and have sort of everything answered and tabulated so that in early January, you're going to be able to advertise a position and put some of those thoughts into the position. Yeah, Nothing we, happens the last two weeks of December. Right. You know that? I mean, well, well we did it. The, my, my last search, December 1st, was when the first meeting of the committee, our yeah. first task was to create the surveys. We read this, I gave them homework. They had yeah. to read all of the research before they came to the meeting. Yeah. And then we looked at um, sample surveys and created it right there. It went out two days later both online, I wrote a letter to um, the families and told them what the process was and why we wanted their input. It was a digital survey with paper as requested. Mm -hmm. So it went home in paper, but we, we gave the link. Most people answered it digitally, but it took about a week to get that information back. Then we ran the um, December 15th, we ran the focus groups. We could run them into January. I recommend that we get the ad in, in early January. That's right after the holidays is yeah. when people are starting to think, <clears throat> do I really want to stay in my job? <laughs> <laughs> and um, that worked. We could, we could back it up to November. Well, no, what you're just, I would just, uh, as long as you're very, I would not let the committee decide, I would be very directive and bring all the stuff that you did before to that first meeting. Like oh, yes. Say. Okay, well then that's different, okay, then. Yeah. Yeah. The first I've done it. I certainly want committee process. input, but we're not starting from scratch. Yeah, right. We're saying, do you like, you know, here's some questions to work from. Yeah. They're pretty generic. Like yeah, when you, when you look so. online yeah. and you look at research in other schools, yeah. there's a pretty generic yeah. collection of questions. Yeah. Mainly it's saying, what are you looking for? Yeah. What are things that are important to you? What do you value about this school? Right. Yeah. What are some things you'd like to see different? I mean, that's basically yeah. the questions. People are very happy to answer it. So. Um, we could certainly consider a sooner start. I just thought we could follow a process that um, really worked and also give the fall the time to focus on this leadership team yeah. really getting the school up and running before we're thinking next leadership team. Yeah. So that's confident it's going to happen, then it's going to happen. 
right? That's it's going to happen. It's gonna happen. Louise good. says it's going to happen. <laughs> yeah. Good. Good. Yeah. Just, yeah. 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 No, I I understand your your yeah. thinking on that. Yeah. And you know, I'll I'll think about maybe yeah. we want to start a little before Thanksgiving, but I'm I'm hesitant to start too early because then it yeah. feels like we've been doing this forever. Yeah. You know, it, you, you sort of lose yeah. momentum too. Yeah. Okay. No, I think if the committee is presented with a lot of stuff ready to go, it'll be good. Great. Yeah. Where's your husband? Is he done? Where's my husband? He's yeah. in Maine. Yeah. He has 220 miles to go. My husband is hiking the Appalachian okay. Trail, so oh, he's nice. done 1,950 miles. Oh, wow. He's so, right. Did he, he started? He started in March, yeah. and wow. he started in Georgia. Wow. And so Did he read he's Bill Bryson's book. As he said to me, "Don't worry, I'm I'm just going to Georgia and walking home." Right. <laughs> <laughs> and I said, "You're gone. How long?" Did, did he read the Walk in the Woods first? Yes. Oh, yes. Okay. So anyway, he has that the roughest part to go, I which know. is the hundred mile wilderness. Yeah, right. So, Great. Well, that's so exciting. Thanks. Yeah. Thank you. Thanks for asking. All right. Um, anybody have any? Absolutely. Yes. Yeah, yes. Yeah. I'm going to finish Keep going. Yeah. The start of school was wonderful. It. I, I have to again commend this team that we put together and the entire staff, the IAs, the custodians, the teachers. They they did a beautiful job in this building, and you know, for me, right from the superintendent's retreat, the administrative retreat to the sixth grade uh, ice cream social, which was Fun. wonderful and just delicious. And of course, the three of them dressed up. We'll have to publish that picture on the website <laughs> oh, no. or something. It's going out in the back there, news. All right, good, good, good. Special spotlight. Nice. So, and through the, uh, the opening, um, you know, we had a, we had, Flory engaged us, you know, presented us with a lovely breakfast, a hot breakfast, which hadn't, we haven't had in a while. Uh, for our staff, they are the ones doing the heavy lifting, and we certainly want to show them through food how much we appreciate what they do. Uh, so that, so then, um, I was able to be here for the the faculty meeting, and I was able to speak to the IAs to tell them how much we appreciate them as well. I have been an IA; I was an IA for ten years before I you know, moved on, and I get it. So, anyway, that was wonderful. The, the news is, and I will be sending out a blurb to the families, but the administrative team and I met last week to discuss the possibility of piloting a blizzard bag program in our district for this school year. Um, after reviewing the documents and information from other districts who engaged in the program last year, as a team, we decided that we would take this school year to do more research and to develop a quality protocol <coughs> that would meet the specific needs of our students so that we would have a lot more answers in place and a lot more information before we rolled out a blizzard bag. And uh, what, I, what we plan to do again is survey the families, again, survey the teachers, everyone, you know, either they are really for it or they're just not thinking that you can replace a classroom teaching with that. Um, in my piece would be uh, I'd like to keep them working before MCAS. So mm -hmm. most of our snow days are before MCAS and so I'd like to keep them engaged on those days. But I'm also hoping we won't have any snow days this year. That would be a real <laughs> test. But anyway, we decided that we would wait, that we're not ready to jump in. Our friends in Orange and Mahar have and I've talked with that superintendent who's just lovely and full of information and resources, and I also got a lot of resources from Gateway too, Dr. Hobson, and he was very helpful, so, which I shared with our team. And we think we'll wait and watch other people yeah. weigh those Over waters that. and learn from them. Uh, so I plan on being uh, more visible in the buildings this year. Tina and I have made plans to meet at least every two weeks, that I would meet her here in the building and walk the building with her we had a wonderful time last week. We went in all the classrooms, but I also had my eyes opened at the pre-K playground. So <laughs> luckily this week, we're really getting things going there. Yeah. Um, and again, the superintendent's job is to always, the first year, go slow, learn the lay of the land, the values and the traditions of the district, and then to work with my team to make a vision and a strategic plan for moving forward. 
what is my what is my plan for the district with the district to move forward and um, for the next two years mm -hmm. I um, was able to work closely with my team we worked on the foundation that was built before I got here with the uh, CMSI audit and the special ed DESE audit and the areas where we were moving and so we were able to build off that the we've met about three times three four times on the strategic plan we will have one more meeting before I present it to you at the October 5th meeting uh, the joint meeting is it the 6th or the 5th, 5th. 5th. Yeah. the October 5th meeting and uh, that would be at Frontier at 6 o'clock and so we're excited about that it's nice to have a direction and to pull back everything we do of course is for the students and everything we do has to come from the strategic plan we always need to look at the strategic plan how is this going to 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 work with our plan and how are we going to improve student achievement thank you thank you great thank you. good good questions no. okay great thank you um I think, unless anybody has anything else to add, we are going to adjourn. Motion to adjourn. Motion to adjourn. Okay. We will. Wait on a second. Wait on a second. Okay. Seven. Okay. Seven. 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 That's wrong. It's seven. Yep. Evans. Okay. Good. Great. Great. Thank you, everybody. Thank you all. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you.